He served this nation for decades, wearing the cloth of the Republic. He was one of the very first public figures to understand what was happening in 2015 when a non-politician decided to run for the highest office in the land. I consider him a friend. He was also my superior in the presidential transition team and then my colleague in the White House when he became Donald Trump, President Trump's national security advisor. And I am so honored that he is giving his first national radio interview here with us right now since the pardon last week. His name is Lieutenant General Mike Flynn. General Flynn, welcome to America First. Oh, thank you so much, Seven. I love the introduction of your show. I mean, it's, it's inspiring. Thank you kindly, sir. Yes, we, we have kept that introduction since we launched the, launched the show almost two years ago because it really is uh, what we are about here on America First. So first mm -hmm. things first, I can't wait to see you. I know you're doing very important work with Sidney Powell in an undisclosed location. I can't wait to see you back in the swamp where you belong, fighting the swamp creatures. Um, talk to us uh, about this unique pardon which the president called a pardon of innocence as soon as i heard it last week thanksgiving week i tweeted out it should never have happened it shouldn't happen like this but i'm glad it happened talk to us about the last few days in your life general flynn well i, I i'll tell your audience that it really hasn't sunk in yet because it's such a surreal uh process that my entire family has gone through and that includes my extended family because as you know, Seth, I have a large number yes. of brothers and sisters. I have, I have nine. My wife's one of seven. So we have an, extent, an extended and large family that it has affected and impacted all of us. So I, it really hasn't sunk in yet um, for me personally. I will tell you that I really do appreciate the, uh, the type of, uh, of words that the president used and certainly the White House statement that they came out with used in the language to describe what happened. Uh, very, very powerful. Uh, it should not have ever happened uh, to me, should never happen to any American citizen who, uh, who decides to step into the, you know, the political environment and, uh, and challenge the, you know, those that, uh, that would otherwise want to change our way of life. Uh, mine, mine was really not a, uh, a, a really a, an, a, an issue that was revolved around a criminal act it revolved around really political persecution and and uh that was clear from the beginning it was clear to me uh, it'll be a story that i will tell uh soon and someday uh and it's an amazing story uh, i will say that uh you do learn we did learn my, my family certainly my wife and i certainly learned who uh we learned a lot about our faith our faith in God. We learned a lot about our family and how strong our family, uh, you know, has been with us. You know, we, we, we use the hashtag, hashtag fight like a Flynn. And, uh, and, uh, and we also learned about true friendships, you know, and uh, like people like yourself who stood, stood alongside during some tough times when people were questioning what was going on and they didn't really know. Uh, you know, you really, really do learn in the toughest of times uh, where loyalty lies and who your true friends are. So that's sort of where we are today. And we're just reflecting on everything and trying to uh, feel a little bit better about about what's happening. And, and now we're in the middle of, we're in the midst of trying to support, uh, you know, in this case, Sydney Powell supported me and she needs my help now. So I'm, I'm trying to help her. Well, we are very glad that you are right there fighting the swamp already just days after the president has pardoned you. It's a pardon of innocence because you committed mm -hmm. no crime. We're talking to Lieutenant General Mike Flynn. Follow him right now, Jen Flynn on Twitter. Um, let me disclose, you know, I, I knew you first. I met you when you were still in the U.S. Army. You were the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency. I was a Pentagon civilian. I was teaching irregular warfare. We met and I was instantly... Um, 
um, impressed by your plan to revolutionize the way America does intelligence, to change the way we do it so it is more applicable to the warfighter and it exploits intelligence rapidly. Um, then you became, uh, then you were forced out of office by the Obama administration. You got to know mm -hmm. President Trump. You became a, 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 an incredible spokesman for the MAGA agenda and then ended up, we were on the transition team together. I remember sitting in that, your little office with a whiteboard doping out how the National Security Council should look in the new administration. We come in, you get interviewed your second day in the job. You get interviewed by two FBI officials who afterwards admitted that you did no wrong, but you were framed. So here's the question for you. Three years later, millions of dollars spent by you, a political persecution. Why did they have to take you down, Mike Flynn? Yeah, that's that's uh, we don't have enough time in your show to talk about the whole fact. We don't probably have enough time in this week. Uh, here's what I would just say to synthesize it. My my whole uh, life in the military and for those that have, you know, that worked around me and know me, I, you know, I'm one of these guys that comes into an organization and looks at processes, looks at procedures, looks at the leadership, looks at how we train people and really tries to improve and, and, and make things, you know, it's not just make things be, you know, more efficient, but it's also trying to solve the, the, the problems for the people in the field. And I was one that came into Washington, D.C. I didn't get to Washington, D.C. until I was a two-star. I never served. I served in the, you know, as a field soldier, uh, served, you know, in, in infantry divisions and in airborne divisions and special operations. Uh, in, you know, in other tactical and strategic commands, too, and, and served as a, in the intelligence community all the way up uh, to the director of one of the largest intelligence agencies in the world, the Defense Intelligence Agency, as well as I served as the assistant director of national intelligence for partner engagement uh, with uh, under James Clapper for a year. So I say all that because what I learned is that the, the efficiency, the effectiveness, the ability of the intelligence community does not function well inside of Washington, D.C. The Where it functions best is in the field, and that's where our best people are. What we find is the everybody stares at their navel in Washington, D.C., and it's what we call, you, you're very familiar with this, is the circular reporting, yeah. and you get somebody who wants to have credit. There's so many people in, uh, in Washington, D.C. that want to have credit. So all that, all that said, there's also a scale to what we have in our intelligence community that is just, it's so bloated and oversized and it is therefore cumbersome and less effective and doesn't actually address the needs of the people that actually uh, have the problems out in the field, so to speak. When I say the field, that's everybody from ambassadors to war fighters. You know, it's, it's our, our foreign partners who are seeking help. Uh, so there's a lot of issues and, and uh, components of that but uh, bottom line is that our intelligence community needs massive massive reform and people go well that, that can't, can't happen it actually can and one of the areas that it can happen is in uh you know I, I've, I've studied uh, the audits of our intelligence community certainly uh, the dia and other other parts of the intel community that that you know sort of 10 years to look at where where and how do we prioritize the, the money that's spent? And I think the American public would be better served if we uh, did a much more thorough and a more transparent uh, review of that kind of stuff and focus on the real true threats that we face. He and threats from a, na from a national security, excuse me, uh, uh, Seb, uh, uh, the threats from the national security perspective are not just foreign, they are also domestic. And I'll stop there. He had a plan to drain the swamp before Donald John Trump came down that escalator and that's why he had to be destroyed. But he fights like a Flynn and he has won. He will be with us to discuss what he's doing now and his take on the election here in the United States. Follow him right now on Twitter and Parler. He is General Mike Flynn, Jen Flynn on those platforms. Support him as well at MikeFlynnDefenseFund.org. I'm Sebastian Gorka, former strategist to President Donald J. Trump. This is the Salem Radio Network. Do not whatever you are doing right now do not touch that dial
so honored. We are so, so excited not to just have General Flynn pardoned. He's pardoned because he's innocent, but to have him on our show. Let's have a reminder from when he was at the podium in the White House. Iran continues to threaten U.S. friends and allies in the region. The Obama administration failed to respond adequately to Tehran's malign actions, including weapons transfers, support for terrorism, and other violations of international norms. The Trump administration condemns such actions by Iran that undermine security, prosperity, and stability throughout and beyond the Middle East, and place, which places American lives at risk. President Trump has severely criticized the various agreements reached between Iran and the Obama administration, as well as the United Nations, as being weak and ineffective. Instead of being thankful to the United States in these agreements, Iran is now feeling emboldened. As of today, we are officially putting Iran on notice. We are putting Iran on notice. Since that time, he has been politically persecuted for three years, millions, millions of dollars lost. But last week, Thanksgiving week, he was pardoned, a pardon of innocence by the president. And here are the words of the statement from the White House. General Flynn should not require a pardon. He is an innocent man. General Flynn, I have to ask you before we talk about the election, uh, your response to former CIA director John Brennan and others saying that Israel shouldn't have killed that Iranian scientist and that uh, it's the wrong thing to do. And Ir Iran is just like another country, General. Yeah. First of all, I appreciate you playing that statement from the podium. I, you know, I, as, as I listen to it, I say to myself, I probably should have been even stronger in my <laughs> language. In terms of John Brennan, John Bra Brennan should be embarrassed. And people in the intelligence community and people, I, certainly those allies and friends that we have throughout the Middle East, they have to be, you know, out, outraged by comments like that from a former director of the CIA. So he should be embarrassed. I, you know, that'll be probably one of the last times that I even talk or use his name. All right. We, we know that uh, if you're on the side of Iran, you are not on the side of America. We're talking to General Flynn. Support him right now. It's MikeFlynnDefenseFund.org for the millions he's had to pay to save himself from political persecution. Follow him at Jen Flynn on Twitter and Parler. Uh, we have to talk about the paths to victory the president still has. But can I ask you a, a little mm -hmm. cheeky question, if I may, Mike? Where would you be today if Sidney Powell hadn't become your new counsel, your new attorney? I'd be in one of two places. I'd either be living in my mother-in-law's basement or I'd be sitting in a jail cell uh, because of, a, because of a, an unnamed uh, member of the judiciary who uh, could not follow the law uh, in our country. And that, those would be one of those two places. And the, the, the latter is, is where that unnamed member of the judiciary wanted me to wanted me to go and that's a shame well you're being uh, you're or, being very uh, you're being yeah. you're being very yeah. diplomatic but we know Sidney yeah. Powell is a warrior princess yeah uh, we you she, know she's America's guardian angel of justice Seb, and she's fighting right now for America and you I mean, for the and for all the citizens right now and you are working with her talk to us about the elections three and a half weeks ago and what the president mm -hmm. needs to do now so, I mean, I think that people need to know that there are paths to victory. There's clear paths to victory. And I, I don't want to take a lot of time going into all the legal actions, but there's there are solid, solid legal cases that I'm aware of in Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia. In some cases, there are individual cases. There's cases that the president's team is putting in. So certainly cases that Sidney Powell is putting in. And there are cases that citizens groups are putting in. We also, I also am aware that Minnesota and Virginia GOP chairs are now joining or wanting to join, um, or I, I am aware that they want to join part of what Sidney Powell has put into Michigan and Georgia because people have come forward with testimony and, and, and affidavits, you know, under the penalty of perjury signed saying that they witnessed the, the same things, what Sidney wrote about in the Georgia and Michigan filings, they observed the same kinds of things. So I think that we are, uh, we're seeing some momentum is what I would tell you. In terms of the path to victory, if, if, uh, if we eliminated what the media has, has declared or claimed, uh, right now, the states that are in question, there are six of them, leave Donald J. Trump with 232 
electoral college votes. Biden with 227. So I'll just I'll walk through four paths to victory, and none of them none of them include Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania to me would be icing on the cake. Uh, three of them include Georgia and Michigan, and and uh, so for, as an example, Georgia, Michigan, Arizona. That's 43 votes. That would give Donald Trump 275. Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin. That's 42 electoral college votes. That gives Donald Trump 274. Georgia, Michigan, Nevada. 38 electoral college votes. That gives him 270. And the fourth one is Michigan, Arizona, and Wisconsin. That gives uh, Donald Trump 37 or 269. And, if, and according to the Constitution, that's resolved by Congress. Each state receives one vote. Trump wins in that scenario. So those are just four of the paths. You can do it, different iterations of that. And not in none of those paths that I mentioned Pennsylvania. And I believe he's going to, I, I believe uh, Trump is going to also win Pennsylvania. I, I and I'll, I'll just talk today briefly because I, I, I believe that the Pennsylvania hearing that Rudy Giuliani led the other day, and then I caught a major portion of uh, today's hearing out in Arizona that I watched. And I'm going to tell you, the, the, the big picture, what happened was when they didn't get the technical votes on the machines the night of the election, and they, they shut down the elections, right? Five states stopped. And then they immediately went to, it was kind of like an uh-oh moment yes. for, the, uh, for the Biden camp. And they said, okay, you know, Joe, go to bed. We're going to take the next three days, three, four days, actually from the 4th through the 7th, and we're now going to start piling on with these ballots. I mean, the, the, it's outrageous what happened. It is clear you that know, they, were, they were caught off guard and they had to have a right. rear guard action to generate right. all right. those missing ballots. We are talking to right. General Mike Flynn. Follow him right now on Parler and Twitter at Jen Flynn and support him at MikeFlynnDefenseFund.org. I have one last comment. It's like my father who survived a communist prison, torture and six years behind bars. It is remarkable that you are an unbroken man, and it is testament to who the Flynns are. God bless you, sir. Can't wait to see you back in the swamp fighting the swamp creatures. I'm Sebastian Gorka. This is America First. Last Wednesday, President Trump pardoned General Michael Flynn after years-long persecution of the general. The White House stated this in giving him a full and unconditional pardon. General Flynn should not require a pardon. He is an innocent man. Even the FBI agents who interviewed General Flynn did not think he was lying. The prosecution of General Flynn is yet another reminder of something that has long been clear. After the 2016 election, individuals within the outgoing administration refused to accept the choice the American people had made at the ballot box and worked to undermine the peaceful transition of power. The general and his family were gracious in their expressions of gratitude, saying, quote, the Flynn family is grateful to President Donald J. Trump for answering our prayers and the prayers of a nation by removing the heavy burden of injustice off the shoulders of our brother Michael with a full pardon of innocence. We thank President Trump for recognizing our brother's sacrifice in this battle for truth, our constitution, our republic, and all that America stands for around the world. A true beacon of liberty. Joining us tonight by phone is General Michael Flynn, who has served this nation with great distinction uh, in the United States military and in his uh, uh, private uh, life and political life as well. General, first of all, it's an honor to have you on the broadcast, and we, uh, uh, we are absolutely thrilled that President Trump uh, took this action. I know that there were reservations uh, on your part and that of your defense counsel about accepting such a pardon. Uh, give us your, your state of mind and heart uh, at this moment. Well, first of all, Lou, thanks very much for having me on your show and, and for your audience. And for you personally, you have been a beacon of light for this country and uh, have been really relentless in the pursuit of truth. I, I honestly uh, well, do not. It, is, it has not sunk in yet, Lou. Uh, it will, I, I would say, and I just reemphasize some of the points that you made from my family's letter. My, uh, my, my faith in God, he's an amazing spirit. He's an amazing light. In my life, the strength of my family, particularly my wife, 
Uh, we've been together, you know, for decades since we were 13 years old. And, uh, and really what I call, what I describe as true friends, Lou, patriots all across this country, friends that I've had from when I was a kid to, uh, to those that I met in the military. But the outreach by America to my family and I is just extraordinary, and it has really given me the resilience that I have uh, been able to be blessed by to fight through this and get to the point where we got. And I really do appreciate the uh, president for uh, seeing uh, what what he and what the White House described as a pardon of innocence, because that's exactly what it is. It, it is that. Uh, it is also, uh, I, I know your defense attorney, Sidney Powell, who has uh, mm-hmm. worked tirelessly uh, uh, and relentlessly in your behalf. Uh, she, at one point, uh, hated to see the president uh, give a pardon. Uh, and I know that means that you uh, were concerned about it as well. How did you mm-hmm. overcome that uh, that reticence? I'll put it that way. Well, I, I think at a certain point in time, you know, Knowing myself, I'd have probably just continued to go and go and go. But but uh, as my family and I, particularly my wife and I, talked about it and uh, and honestly prayed over it, uh, we came to the conclusion that that this was the right moment in time to do this. That the the justice system that uh, that we were facing was just not going to function properly. And it was very, very obvious that that was going to be the case. So, uh, you know, we we uh, we went and um, made made the decision that this is the direction that we wanted to go, and uh, good enough for uh, President Donald Trump uh, for coming coming through. And uh, and we're we're you know certainly grateful to him, but uh, at the same time we also know that this was a political persecution of the highest order. And uh, not something that any American should ever have to go through. We still don't know the uh, the well the full extent of the uh, reporting on the moment at which you were being framed uh, in the White mm-hmm. House by two FBI uh, agents. Uh, we still haven't seen uh, Agent uh, uh, Plinka's uh, uh, so-called 302, uh, which is a summary of that interview. Uh, it's extraordinary that the Justice Department still withholds this, the FBI, so much about your case. Who do you hold responsible for what they did to you, the persecution of General Michael Flynn, for more than four years? Well, I mean, I think at the end of the day, people want me to say something, or you know, for years, you know, are you, are you upset with President Trump? Are you upset with the, the, the White House? And the answer is no. And the reason why, because this was a setup from the beginning, and it really, uh, where accountability lies is it lies in the previous administration. I mean, we all know that. The the truth has been out now for, you know, well over a year, uh, probably a year and a half, and there's been extraordinary what everybody now, you know, knows as exculpatory evidence, right, that has come out, and it's come out through the the great— fighting warrior strength of Sidney Powell. And that type of information, you say to yourself, oh, my God, you know, what What was this, uh, the previous administration doing during the campaign of, of, uh, of Donald Trump, during the transition of Donald Trump, and then during, while he was, while he was in office? I mean, he, this, and I said in my statement that, uh, that this country should never be usurped by the power in our government and by the institutions of our government, justice, federal law enforcement, the intelligence, uh, ever again, and uh, and and I know that the president uh, feels the same way as I do, and we cannot have that in a in a in a in a country like we have a beautiful, strong country like we have, uh, and and survive. And uh, and honestly, that as I've gone through four years of this, Lou, uh, so hasn't the president. And frankly, it more damaging has so so has the country, and the country has been damaged by Absolutely. this. Absolutely. And I think we're, we're still feeling the pain in this recent election. Well, General Flynn has never flinched from a fight, uh, and this time is no exception. He's engaged in a new battle, the battle for the White House and the future of this very republic.